Thank you for watching Ravens Roundup, but we're 100% real, no matter if it's the popular opinion or not. I hope you enjoyed this segment. Click the like button and share it on your socials. Thank you and enjoy. <laughs> See, I say wait for you, coach. I know. We just, I wasn't ready yet. <laughs> yeah, I said eight by 18. Let's calm down. All right, uh, number three. Uh, how open would you be for a return of Hollywood Brown to Baltimore? Even though his projected market value, this is no real number. This is from, um, what's it? What's the site? Um, over the cap. Bullshit. Over the cap. Oh, I think okay. it's over the cap. His projected market value would be $14 million. How open would you be for a return of Hollywood Brown to Baltimore? That's, and that's a question for everybody, including the people in the chat. Yeah, I wouldn't mind it, but is there something else coming before that $14 million? Meaning right. I, wanted, I want the O-line taken care of Yes. before we get to a Hollywood Brown. Um, just as a player, like, yeah, I would love it. Mm -hmm. You know, you know that he has that connection with Lamar. He brings a, a, a element that can get open horizontally, horizontally and vertically, which is something I think the, the offense needs. I know we have Zay. Cool. Now we got another one who can do similar things. I'm, I, I, I don't think I'm not of the mindset that it has to be a basketball team. Mm -hmm. I, I just want to get good players who have chemistry with Lamar. And that's one that we already know. We don't have to guess. You know, oh, so how's he gonna fit in with Lamar? Do they have to practice? And they already have that chemistry. So right. uh, to me, that would be something that I'd definitely be interested in. But take care of that O line first. Gotcha. I think, man, like Ravens fans, I don't know, like if it's PTSD or, or what's going on, man. But like, I see a lot of no way for fourteen, and fourteen million dollars is not a lot of money for a wide receiver. <laughs> you just gave That's Odell right. fifteen, eighteen, whatever. Eighteen, the hell right? And, right. and 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 Marquise, uh, yeah, part time so disrespect him and everything. I mean, he had a, like eleven hundred yards for y'all last time he was there. Sure did. He had he had one Greg Roman offense. awful awful game, and he called out your your beloved coaching staff. And now he he now he's like a dead man walking out there. Right. Yeah. And he's still young. Yep. Uh, Hollywood is what twenty six maybe at the most. Yeah. yeah. If that. Yeah, no, yeah. I mean, yeah. Like like Chris said, take care of the O line first, and it has to be a. I say take care of the O line, and we have to sign Saquon. All right, we got it. We we have to we have to make a real investment this off season into the offense, man. And we can't be afraid about the price tag, man. We just got more more cap room than we expected. All right, let's not act like we're we're broke here. All right, like we we can spend money. Okay, we're, we're not the we're not the poorest team in the in the league. Uh, go and do what you got to do. Manipulate the cap number, however you have to, to bring some players on that side of the ball. That's where the investment needs to be this offseason. The, th the thing is, is where it gets funny is when you do what you need to do with Matter BK. Then it gets really, really tight. Mm -hmm. well, it doesn't well, get tight when you let them walk. Yeah, no, no, saying, not, in, in our, our world, it's wide open. What we need in. to do is let him, is let him it's go. Wide open <laughs> in. Yeah. It's wide open. It's wide open. <laughs> in. Like, I mean, I, I'm just gonna be honest. Like, Matt and BK had a, uh, an incredible year. Great one year, player. incredible. Yeah, one it, year. it was it wasn't one year, but let, let's give him the benefit of the doubt and say like that's just you know the light switch went on and that's who he is yeah. now. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, great player, but I mean, he's not out there winning games for you. You know, I mean, Joe Thune was out. He didn't dominate the interior of that Kansas City line. Like he had a good game, mm -hmm. but he wasn't out there making game changing plays like like you point out all the time with Chris Jones, right? That wasn't Chris. him. You right, Chris? Hey. Now Chris, Chris cut up versus Simpson, and I and I did and I really did expect Matt BK to cut up versus whoever that backup was. Um, shoot, I yeah. forgot his name. That, that guy. I love that, ready. And <laughs> the funny thing is about it being, I didn't think about it until you just said it. He played so well. I looked at him as being a replacement for Simpson because he afraid Allegretti. Allegretti's mm. good too. Allegretti, that's what it is. I looked at him as being a replacement. I like maybe we can get this dude to be a replacement for Simpson because we didn't agent. do Jack Sh. You know what versus him? 
<laughs> I think, like again, not to say that Manavik is not a, a good player and not a, a valuable player, but if you look at specifically with this team, who failed offensively year after year after year after year in the playoffs, if you can bring back Matabike and get maybe one guy on offense, or if you can get a couple of playmakers on offense and a couple of old linemen to upgrade that, it's just not worth it to bring Matabike back. Yeah, I'm I'm in the, I'm in the notion of because you know I'm 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 gonna you know I'm I know we Queen is done so is he's out of there. And my thing is with Matt BK is I would love to have him back, but you already signed two dudes to that same position. And you, you already him. signed two dudes to that position. And 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 I I don't think Matt BK I think this year was not a fluke. I don't think he's gonna fall off the cliff next year. But Lamar <laughs> Lamar is the guy that's going to win us championships. Yeah. So we need to make the game easier for him. I think we need to get to the point where we outscore people and we have great situational defense. Yeah. We don't, I don't think we can win a Super Bowl and hold people to 16 points. I think we can hold them to 24 points and score 40. So get, get Lamar what he needs, you know, whether that be Hollywood, whether that be who, and I don't think Mike Evans is like, I I just, I just don't think we can afford 20 off $24 million receipt because I think. Especially losing both guards and with our tackles holding on by a string, the old line got to be addressed. No, no matter how you address it, whether it be free agency, draft, the old line got to be addressed. That's where most of the money I feel like got to go. But you still need guys that can make make plays. So, you know, and I don't know how we got here from Marquise Brown <laughs> question, but we're here. <laughs> but that's why they needed to bring back at least one of those guards. Right. I don't know why you put yourself in a position to have to find two starting guards in the same offseason uh, when you should be looking to to upgrade your tackle position uh, right. as well. Train. I don't. Gotta, I don't mind him. I don't mind him letting um Zaytler walk. I think he's hanging on by a thread. Like I know he made the Pro Bowl, but it's some it's some up and down with him for the last two seasons. Like well, there's good I mean, in there. There's good in there, but it's at 34. That cliff comes fast. I'll right. tell you what, though, Chris. Welcome to the Sala and Cleveland show. No, it's because it, we we know they're going to address it. Well, like, according, to, according to the streets, do, welcome do to we? the Voorhees show. We do. I mean, how they've addressed it up until this point with I said with they're Eric going God. to address it. No, but I'm saying it's been an issue the entire time, right? And how they've addressed it up to right point, guard, right guard hasn't been guard has been period. Like oh, where like and no, they they addressed no, no, they right, addressed right guard with Tyler. No, 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 I'm saying they address right guard with Zyler, but left guard's been an issue the entire time, right? And how they've addressed it is with Eric DaCosta drafting guys in the middle rounds and missing on every single one of them. So, I, I think I think I'm a, I'm a, and the only I'm guy Zyler recluse, because he I'm got cut. I'm recluse Eric well, DaCosta from this right guard thing. Well, the you coaches, said... The coaches but didn't put the main guy that should have been there in the competition. If he put Ben Cleveland over there, whether he was good enough to play it or not, that would have at least made John Simpson better for the season. John Simpson, all he had to do was roll out of the bedroom Gatorade, and he was better than Salah. Nice. So he had to get better. So I was a professional too. Okay, a professional, uh, professional uh, dummy holder. Uh, <laughs> I'll give EDC credit on this. I thought when Simpson was being highly graded and all of that, that he was going to try to extend them. During the season, and he didn't, so I'll give him credit for that. I thought that, that was, I just knew that he fall for the banana tailpipe. <laughs> nah, I just knew, I just knew that was coming. So I'll give him no, credit. Th- so, so this is the reason why, why I'm confident that they're gonna go aggressively with it because whenever they have like a deficiency somewhere, they usually attack it, whether it works or it doesn't, they usually throw resources at it, mm-hmm. you know. That, they drafted Hollywood. They drafted Boykin. Like, yeah, now in hindsight, it's like, oh, yeah, Miles Boykin. But back then, that's a first and a third. Those are premium yeah. picks that you throw in at the situation. And then also with the same thing with PQ and um, uh, Malik, Harrison. Malik, Harrison, Malik Harrison, a first and a third. Like, those are premium picks. Now, you have to hit on those, yeah. but you're you're addressing – well, you're trying to address the situation. You're just not like – no, nah, we're not going. We're going to spend a, a fifth round pick on it. <laughs> my, my my point wasn't that they're not going to do anything. Obviously, they have to do something. 
But my point is that he's failed at addressing the position over and over and over, is what I'm saying. And they and they only even signed Kevin Zeidler because he was a guy who got cut and didn't affect the comp picks. That's why they jumped on him as soon as he got cut, right? So, I mean, I don't know that – obviously there's guys who are going to get released. I mean, I don't know who. Maybe maybe they get lucky and a, and a solid starter uh, gets released yeah. again and they can kind of jump in and, and grab somebody like that. But other than that, if we're talking about – going and signing somebody in free agency, I don't know that they're going to be willing to spend the money. It's not what they like to do. Uh, and if you're talking about going in the draft, he's hit on one o- O-lineman in, in the draft. Well, in I, mean, five years. I mean, yeah, I mean, that's to Chris's earlier point. You know, if we're going to be making some of these other signings, we got to make sure O-line's taken care of. That's mm-hmm. where they need to spend the money. I mean. Yeah, and I, I think it would be dumb to go in with two rookies. Like, it, like let's say if they just draft mm-hmm. one in the first and one in the third. Like, yeah. I don't think you want to go into the season with two rookies as your starting guards. Like, right. I think it, yeah. it has to be a, a vet and a rookie. Like, that's what I think. And, and, that, and that's, that's, that's even like, as, that's uh, even as Voorhees is one of the guys because he technically is still a rookie. Yeah, like I don't. Uh, he's yeah, like all right, with Voorhees stuff. Like, I'm tired. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, like I get it. Like, yeah, you got to put him in the and he's in the competition. Right. But we are not writing that in pen. Make make yeah. uh, my thing is like you just make it a combat. Make them fight for it. Just make him fight for it, and if he win it, fine. Then that's but great. Don't, don't, no problems. Right. Just don't hand, hand Here's the Here's my issue out. with everybody saying Voorhees, right? That's like us saying, hey, we have a, we have, we're good at edge rusher. We don't need to bring back Clowney or Van Noy. We have Owe and Ojabo, right? But what, what would the argument be? Look, Ojabo hasn't played that much. He's been hurt. Yeah. But Ojabo was a second round pick with with first round talent. A lot of people will tell you, you know, he could have been a first round pick until he got here. That's, that's what a lot of people say. We've actually seen him play snaps before. Mm-hmm. Right. Might have been like five snaps, but we see him play snaps. <laughs> OK, we haven't seen anything from Voorhees and Voorhees was a what, seventh round pick. Uh, yes. Yeah. Seventh round pick. All right. He wasn't projected to be a first round pick. Third, I think. Yeah. Somebody and told that, me on Twitter. Awesome. Um. He had because I admit I said I said I don't want to see hear nothing about him until he touched <laughs> grass or something. So I was like, but but um Ojabo got two he played two games, he got two sacks, and he got two forced fumbles. And I was like, Yeah, in two years. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, mean, but, I mean people have higher expectations of Voorhees than they do Ojabo, is what I'm saying. And that just goes to the mindset that we have about offense on this team. Offense is just kind of like, hey, just throw some guys out there, it'll be all right. But defense, we have to get it right. You, you can't just throw anybody out there and be okay with it. But this is a year where we have to make that switch and say, we had talent on defense. We've drafted a lot of young guys on defense, mm-hmm. right? Everybody we're talking about having to replace. I mean, we talked about Matabike. I mean, we also drafted Travis Jones. You know, uh, we re-signed Rod- Roderick Washington. We re-signed Michael Pierce. That's taken care of. We drafted Trenton Simpson to replace Queen. That just ha- what it has to be. And let those guys play, and the the investment on short things needs to be on the offense. <laughs> Who you laughing at? Me? <laughs> I, I'm laughing at Black Daniel. Who you yeah, laughing at? Me? Me. I'm laughing at Black Daniel. You laughing? Which one? You on the street? Which one? Uh, you on the street? <laughs> 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 on the street. <laughs> oh, let me let me get brewing. <laughs> he says, um, "So I'll be joining late. Hey, better late than never. Better late than never. Appreciate it." He says, uh, but has anyone looked at the zero for 31 since 2008 when running 20 times or less? Yes. Yes. That is strictly on coaching. And no matter how much they say, well, we called a lot of RPOs and it was changed. At the... Stop trying to throw my man on the bus. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's that's why they told you you can't go and talk to nobody on other people's show. But can you say some stupid stuff like that? Yeah, c- crickets, right? That's why I told you you, you can't go and, and interview. No, saying stupid stuff like that. Don't be throwing nobody up under the bus. You keep that stuff in house. You've been a coach long enough to don't make don't make me get on the soapbox. <laughs> He'd been a coach long enough to do exactly what he intended to do. Mm-hmm. Keep and keep the spotlight on someone not named John Harbaugh. Careful, y'all. Don't be toxic. <sighs> no, that that no, that was this was what I was about to say was at the coaches. Yeah. What no, it was because you just don't throw your players on the bus, man. No matter no matter yeah. how much no matter how much they mess up your plan, you eat it. 
You eat it. I don't care if they make $26 million or they, they got five classes a day and they writing essays all day. If it, you eat it because you the coach. It's a big problem when you can't say, yeah, this was stupid. Right. Like, like you have to you have to come up with an excuse like that remember that that um where he challenged something and he was like oh yeah i knew i knew um that i couldn't challenge it or something like that i forgot what exactly it was I'm trying like, to make it like it was a time when well, he, he was using for a time out to get somebody from rest or something yeah and i was like <laughs> yeah. no you didn't like that's you <laughs> just just say you made a mistake like right. you don't you don't have to make it seem like oh yeah you was playing chess while everybody else is playing checkers like no <laughs> well, and, Bro, and, and, we'll, we'll respect yeah. you more if you just come out and say hey i, I screwed up exactly but it, and it's bs anyway because it after the first 10 rpos where he never handed the ball off wouldn't you just start calling some run plays you would think so and then after uh, you come out at halftime and say we have to have to run the ball. Okay, so what happened? I hope it happens. I don't know. <laughs> that's why that's why I told I told Jose, don't underestimate him. You're right, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Don't underestimate yeah. him. So uh, you know, that said Hollywood's pretty good. That's a <laughs> <laughs>